Hey everyone, welcome back to all my listeners. I hope everyone's having a great day so far. If it's your first time finding me, thanks so much and welcome. Welcome to a brand new season. A new month of May starts off my season six. So welcome, welcome to my first episode of season six. Today is Wednesday, May 4th, 2022. My name is Sonal Patel and this is the Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. Now, all right, you guys, I've got to start the season off strong. So I'm gonna be diving into my compliance tip today. I'll be getting us back to basics with the medical and surgical package. And I go ahead and dive into a huge newsworthy OIG report on its findings upon reviewing Medicare Advantage organizations, or MAOs. And I close out today's episode with some inspirational words on vision and leadership from Ralph Lauren. If you check me out on LinkedIn, you know I'm all about compliance and protecting our physicians and valued healthcare professionals when it comes to the business of medicine. I hope this week with me brings you enough to take back to your organizations, to want to dive in deeper, to use my tips and best practices to ensure success. I hope this podcast will help you boost the quality of documentation capture and improve coding accuracy as you help your providers paint the medical picture. If you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss another episode. Please write in a review and kindly drop me a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to my podcast. I'd really love your support. And as always, a friendly disclaimer. Remember, I'm bringing you the news, current healthcare industry news, my compliance tips and recommendations based on my over 10 years of experience in front office, in back end, in coding and in billing for multi-specialty physicians, compliance and auditing for both ENM and surgical operative reports. These are my opinions alone and are not to be construed as legal advice. So let's get into newsworthy. There's so much buzz about this 61 page hot off the press OIG report delivered by Christy Grimm which is titled, Some Medicare Advantage Organization Denials of Prior Authorization Requests Raise Concerns About Beneficiary Access to Medically Necessary Care. Now, in my opinion, that title is attention-grabbing for sure. And of course, my folks, my parents, have an MAO plan, so I'm always curious when prior auths are denied, right? It's such a burden to folks like my parents. Now, let's unpack the motives here but behind this OIG study, right? Why did they do the study? Now, those of us in healthcare already understand, I think, what's behind the capitated payment model, right? All of our collective main concerns about the capitated payment model used in Medicare Advantage is the potential incentive for these MAOs to deny patient access to services and then deny payments to providers in an attempt to increase their own profits. Now, although MAOs approve the vast majority of requests for services and for payments, they do issue millions of denials each year. That's right, millions of denials each year. And so CMS then will annually audit these MAOs, and they've already highlighted widespread and persistent problems over these years that are related to inappropriate denials of services and denials of payment. Now, as Medicare Advantage enrollment continues to grow, right, year after year, our aging population continues to grow. MAOs play an increasingly critical role in ensuring that our Medicare patients have access to medically necessary covered services, and that providers are reimbursed appropriately. Now, next, why don't we go ahead and get into how did the OIG frame their sample review here? Now, apparently, the OIG selected a stratified random sample of 250 prior authorization denials and 250 payment denials that were issued by 15 of the largest MAOs during the time period of June 1st through June 7th of 2019. Now, this OIG report says 
that they had healthcare coding experts on their team. Yeah, no, I was not involved in this particular um, investigation. Haha. <laughs> But these particular healthcare coding experts did conduct case file reviews of all of these cases. And also physician reviewers were involved as well. And they examined the medical records for these particular subsets of cases. Now, from these results, the OIG then estimated the rates at which the MAOs denied prior authorization and, and some payment requests, <clears throat> excuse me, that Medicare coverage and MAO billing rules had in place. So they further also examined the reasons that these denials occurred and the types of services associated with these denials in their sample. I think that's really important information, right? What types of services were involved here? So why don't we dive into what the OIG's findings actually were? So of these samples that were reviewed by the OIG, they found that these MAOs sometimes delayed or denied Medicare Advantage beneficiaries access to services, even though the requests met Medicare coverage rules. So let me say that again, right? That's pretty profound stuff. So the OIG found that MAOs sometimes delayed or denied Medicare Advantage beneficiaries access to services, even though the requests met Medicare coverage rules. Wow. Then MAOs also denied payments to providers for some services that met both Medicare coverage rules as well as MAO billing rules. So again, that's profound. So what we know as patients ourselves, right, we are patients ourselves, and we're also children of our older parents. These denied requests that meet Medicare coverage rules may prevent or delay patients from receiving the medically necessary care and can burden providers, right? So once again, both patients and providers are affected negatively again and again. Unbelievable. So the report goes on. Now, there's some small, some small silver lining, in my opinion, right? It's very, very small. So although some of the denials that the OIG reviewed were ultimately reversed by the MAOs, there's, of course, avoidable delays and extra steps, which result in creating friction in the program itself, right? And may create an administrative burden. I think it's a fact. They do create a burden for our patients and for our providers as well as the MAO programs. Now, some examples of healthcare services involved in denials that met the Medicare coverage rules included advanced imaging services. I found that to be interesting. So those are services like our MRIs or our services like post-acute facility stays, like at our inpatient rehab facilities. So those are the types of services that the, that the OIG detailed that were acceptable and allowed by Medicare coverage rules, but denied from the MAOs. Now, the report also digs into prior authorization requests. So the OIG found that among the prior authorization requests that the MAOs denied, 13% did meet Medicare coverage rules. So in other words, these services likely would have been approved for these patients under traditional Medicare or Medicare fee-for-service, right? Now, the OIG also identified two common causes for these types of denials. First, the MAOs used clinical criteria that are not contained in Medicare coverage rules. Like, for example, they said things were denied because they were reading somewhere that Medicare requires an x-ray before approving more advanced imaging, which led them to deny the requests of prior authorization, right, for these types of services. However, the OIG had physician reviewers who determined that these types of services were medically necessary. So although the OIG review determined that these requests in these particular cases did meet the Medicare coverage rules, CMS guidance is not sufficiently detailed to determine whether these MAOs may deny authorization based on internal 
MAO clinical criteria that go beyond Medicare coverage rules. Now, second, these MAOs indicated that some prior authorization requests did not have enough documentation to support the approval. Yet, the OIG reviewers found that the existing patient medical records were sufficient to support the medical necessity of the services. So bravo to those coders on staff at the OIG and the physicians that did find plenty of supportive information in the inside of the existing patient records. So kudos. Now, then the report goes further and digs into payment requests. So the OIG found that among the payment requests that the MAOs denied, 18% of those requests did in fact meet the Medicare coverage rules and MAO billing rules. So most of these payment denials in the OIG sample were caused by human error. And of course, humans do make mistakes. So in those 18% of requests, it was found that human error was causing the errors during their manual claims processing review. So when you're doing things by hand, things can go wrong. So things like overlooking a document or that there were multiple system processing errors, like in the MAO's system was not programmed or updated correctly. And then of course the OIG found that the MAO's reversed some of the denied prior auths and payment requests that did meet the Medicare coverage and MAO billing rules. So some of the things were indeed reversed. But often those reversals occurred when a patient or a provider appealed or disputed the denial. So again, right, that's still another burden, another hurdle that patients have to go through or that providers have to go through and appeal. That process, as we know, is lengthy and tedious. Now, and in some cases, the MAOs identified their own errors. So um, I, this is just a crazy report of 61 pages. It is uh, really big and really juicy and still really profound over all of these years, right? So the OIG basically recommended, and mind you, all of these hiccups and these snafus with the MAOs have been ongoing for quite some time, in my opinion, right? These reports come out year after year. These issues are always there. Now, the OIG is now stating that they want new guidance on the appropriate use of MAO clinical criteria in medical necessity reviews. They also want updates to their audit protocols to address the issues identified in this particular report issued in April 2022, just a month ago, such as the MAO's use of clinical criteria and or examining particular service types. And they also want to see improvements on directing MAOs to take additional steps to identify and address vulnerabilities that can lead to manual review errors as well as system errors. And now it's time for my best practice tips and trusty tip. So in today's new back to basics compliance tip, I wanted to focus on the medical surgical package. It's really important to follow coding guidelines and payer policies when it comes to bundling and unbundling, what you can and cannot bill, services that involve more than meets the eye, so to speak. Now, most medical and surgical procedures include pre-procedure, intra-procedure, and post-procedure work. When multiple procedures are performed at the same patient encounter, there is often overlap of the pre-procedure and post-procedure work. Payment methodologies for surgical procedures account for the overlap of the pre-procedure and post-procedure work. The component elements of the pre-procedure and post-procedure work for each procedure are included in component services of that procedure as a standard of medical surgical practice. Now, some general guidelines follow. Number one, many invasive procedures require vascular and or airway access. The work associated with obtaining the required access is already included 
in the pre-procedure or intra-procedure work. The work associated with a returning patient to the appropriate post-procedure state is already included in the post-procedure work. Airway access is necessary for general anesthesia and is not separately reportable. There is no CPT code for elective endotracheal intubation. CPT code 31500 describes an emergency endotracheal intubation and shall not be reported for elective endotracheal intubation. Visualization of the airway is a component part of an endotracheal intubation, and CPT codes describing procedures that visualize the airway, like a nasal endoscopy, a laryngoscopy, or a bronchoscopy, shall not be reported with an endotracheal intubation. These CPT codes describe diagnostic and therapeutic endoscopies, and it is a misuse of these codes to report visualization of the airway for endotracheal intubation. Intravenous access, like with our CPT codes 36000, 36400, and 36410, is not separately reportable when performed with many, many types of procedures, like surgical procedures, like anesthesia procedures, like radiological procedures requiring intravenous contrast, like nuclear medicine procedures requiring intravenous radiopharmaceuticals. Now, after vascular access is achieved, the access must be maintained by a slow infusion, like in our saline drips, or injection of heparin, or saline into a lock, a heparin lock. Since these services are necessary for maintenance of the vascular access, they are not separately reportable with the vascular access CPT codes or procedures requiring vascular access as a standard of medical surgical practice. CPT codes 37211 through 37214 for transcatheter therapy with infusion for thrombolysis shall not be reported for use of an anticoagulant to maintain vascular access. The global surgical package includes the administration of fluids and drugs during the operative procedure. CPT codes 96360 through 96377 shall not be reported separately for that operative procedure. Now, under the OPPS, the administration of fluids and drugs during an operative procedure are included and are not separately reportable like for our CPT codes 96360 through 96377. Now, when a procedure requires more invasive vascular access services, like in our central venous access, pulmonary artery access, the more invasive vascular service is separately reportable if it is not typical of the procedure and the work of the more invasive vascular service has not been included in the valuation of the procedure. Now, insertion of a central venous access device, like our central venous catheter or pulmonary artery catheter, requires passage of a catheter through central venous vessels and, in the case of a pulmonary artery catheter, through the right atrium and ventricle. These services often require the use of fluoroscopic guidance, separate reporting of CPT codes for right heart catheterization, selective venous catheterization, or pulmonary artery catheterization is not appropriate when reporting a CPT code for insertion of a central venous access device. Since CPT code 77001 describes fluoroscopic guidance for central venous access device procedures, CPT codes for more general fluoroscopy, like in our CPT code 76000 and 77002, shall not be reported separately. CPT code 76001 was deleted on January 1st of 2019. Now, the second part of this. For Medicare anesthesia rules, 
They prevent separate payments for anesthesia services by the same physician performing a surgical or medical procedure. The physician performing a surgical or medical procedure shall not report CPT codes 96360 through 96377 for the administration of anesthetic agents during the procedure. If it is medically reasonable and medically necessary that a separate provider or separate supplier, like an anesthesia practitioner, perform anesthesia services like our monitored anesthesia care or, or MAC care for a surgical or medical procedure, a separate anesthesia service may be reported by the second provider, second supplier. Under the OPPS, anesthesia for a surgical procedure is an included service and is not separately reportable. For example, a provider or supplier shall not report CPT codes 96360 through 96377 for anesthesia services. When anesthesia services are not separately reportable, providers and suppliers shall not unbundle components of anesthesia and report them in lieu of an anesthesia code. So, I hope you remember to read your NCCI coding manual. That is the chapter I was reading from. That was from chapter one. Now, as please read it as often as you need to, and at least annually to keep up with these revisions. And there were recent revisions just made in January, 2022. And please stay tuned for next week's episode because I wanna dive into more of the surgical package. So hopefully you're using an online tool that pairs up codes and you can see if there is a CCI edit at play between the two codes, sometimes even more codes, depending on your specialty and the services that you offer to your patient population. It's so important for providers to stay involved in their coding and billing practices. It's fundamental if you have Medicare as a payer to keep your eye on correct and compliant coding and billing practices and make sure you are adhering to them, all of them, to ensure you're meeting the medical necessity from the very start. Because when the documentation paints the medical picture with clarity and vibrancy from the onset of care, a certified medical coder can then abstract codes with accuracy. And finally, I focus Season 6's spark on vision and leadership. I want this sixth season spark to be filled with the world's thought leaders, writers, artists, philosophers, everyone who inspires the need for vision and leadership in all we strive to do. So in this week's inspiring quote in Spark is from American fashion visionary, Ralph Lauren. A leader has the vision and conviction that a dream can be achieved. He inspires the power and energy to get it done. Absolutely true, right? I think this quote inspires us and reminds us that it's only with our boundless energy and commitment to our dreams that those dreams can be actualized can be fully realized. I'm happy Ralph Lauren's spark still burns brightly in all of us today. So that wraps up today's episode. And as always, I appreciate you diving into today with me. If you want more information from me, please go ahead and follow me on LinkedIn. I'll leave links to everything in the show notes below. Please have an incredible week ahead and please continue staying safe and healthy. Thank you so much for listening in on today's episode, and I hope every week with me brings you closer to helping your providers paint a masterpiece. See you next Wednesday.